What's up, hobby friends? My name is Casey, and this is eBay Miniature Rescues. Today, we're going to paint a converted Death Guard model. So last week, I converted a whole bunch of Age of Sigmar Blight Kings into 40k Death Guard models. It was a really fun project, and after the video was done, I couldn't really stop thinking about it. One of the things that happens too often in our hobby is starting a project, getting it to a certain level, and then shelving it to move on to something else. And while there's really nothing wrong with that, I have the tendency to shelve a model and kind of forget about it. I've been working on this Iron Jaws Brute since the Christmas box came out two years ago. I've gotten most of the army done, but I haven't even finished one Brute. Kinda sad. Maybe I should paint some orcs. This Blight King was the start of an underwater themed warband. The idea isn't quite lost yet, but I intended to have these done months ago. In this case, I just really wanted to paint my super cool conversion and see the job through. Many of you commented that you were excited to see the paint on these models, and I have a feeling that if I don't do it now, I probably won't get to it later. Now you may remember that I had converted six models in that last video. Here it is, just in case you missed it. Five for a client and one for me. I've already sent those five back, so I'm only going to be focusing on the one. Kind of a bummer, but sometimes that's just how it goes. Let's start with Vallejo's dark green as a base coat over this zenithly primed model. I want to start dark and give this model a little bit of green. Since this is a conversion, there are a few design aesthetics that clash. So the goal is to try and bring it all together with the paint. Next up we have Sick Green. Shooting from the top, this color will highlight that dark green and give us a good transition if any of this color is still showing after later steps. Here's where things really take a turn. I'm using Vallejo White Gray. I'm going to cover up a majority of the model. It's a fairly thin layer, so the model still has a lot of green in it, but this white gray will take over as the main color for the model. Just a hint of Escorpina green for the little fly on his backpack. Then I'm going to switch to my Sotar 2020 airbrush and get in close with some Vallejo dwarf skin. This will be a base coat for the skin on the arms and give a little life to the nurgling sitting on top of the bolter. The next piece of the puzzle is the armor. There are a couple of things going through my head when I started this. Should I cover all of the armor or pick out accents with copper and leave it green? I've done both on different models and both directions look pretty good. At this point we need to look ahead to see what we can do to balance out the color. If I put copper on all of the armor, then it clashes a little bit with the green. But if we take a look at a color wheel, then there's a really good option to bring these colors together. Using Nagaroth Knight, I'm going to base coat all of the tentacles on the model. Purple completes our color triad and really brings all of the colors together. This is just the first step, of course. We will need to push everything a lot more and bring in some extras to really bring it all together as one. Dark Aluminum will be a great color for the rest of the metallics. Then, using Snakebite Leather Contrast Paint, I'm going to fill in everything that is supposed to be leather. Even over green, this paint covers pretty well, 
and because we're going to be using some washes and pigments, it doesn't have to cover completely to give us the impression of leather. While that's drying, I'm going to highlight the tentacles with Xerius Purple, just trying to put a line down each cylinder where the light is catching from above. This will start to pull out the details and give us something to look at. Using Agrax Earthshade, I'm going to aggressively attack this model. This will be the start to really bringing these pieces together and selling this model as one complete piece and not a cobbled together mess of parts. For the Nurgling, Backpack, and Shoulder Pad, I added a touch of Athonian camo shade into the earth shade to bring out some of the green tones that we airbrushed earlier. Druki Violet on the skin will really push the purple a lot further and give this guy more of a plague marine aesthetic. I'm also going to cover the tentacles with it in order to bring our highlights together and give a little more depth to the tentacle texture. AK Interactive Streaking Grime will be an excellent grime filter for this model, especially on the copper. It brings in a lot more depth and gives us an opportunity to use the oils for some other fun techniques. While the streaking grime is drying, I'm going to come in with some Nylic Oxide. The acrylic paint will react with the oils and not want to go down very easily. The benefit here is that we can slide the oxide around on top of the oils until we get a look that we like, by applying more pressure with the brush to break through that oil layer, the paint will stick. It feels a little more random and it mixes with the grime giving us a much more realistic look. I also like to apply large patches of oxide and press in or wipe off with my finger. It pulls away the grime and oxide, leaving a nice patina behind. Vallejo Rust Wash is a quick and easy way to get your metallics weathered. The more coats, the darker it gets, so you have a good amount of control right out of the bottle. Screamer Pink is another highlight to our tentacles. This is more to pick out the ridges individually, and it brings that detail out really quickly. I have to say that using the Tentacle Maker and seeing the final results with paint makes me really happy. The details are good and not too hard to paint. I added a little white into the pink to brighten it up and reinforce the main highlights running down each cylinder. 
With a final dot of white on the brightest points, it gives the impression that these tentacles are slimy and kind of reflective. For a final push on these tentacles, and to really give more contrast to this dark model, Golden's fluorescent pink as a glaze will really make these tentacles stand out. I also put this into the eyes to bring the pieces together. Now that all of our paints are dry, it's time to start highlighting and finishing the model. I start by edge highlighting and stippling Vallejo Metal Color Aluminum on all of the metallic parts. By breaking up the lines and creating texture, it gives the sense that the metal is rusted, corroded, and old. Once all of the parts have had this treatment, it will act as another unifier for all of our parts. One of the best things to do in order to bring models together, or in this case, random bits on a Blight King, we can use pigments. These powders give a real look of realism to your models. They are powdery and matte, so anything you put them on will immediately not look like painted plastic. Pigment powders are the great unifier. If you don't have some, get some. They can make all the difference. At this point, I'm just going around the bottom third of the model and coating it quite liberally. I also put quite a bit on the cape and weapon handle. Now, the leather boots of the Blight Kings are all but gone, replaced by weathered and beaten legs. The copper is still poking through on one side, so it looks more like a Death Guard model than a Blight King now. Unification complete. Finally, Cadian Flesh Tone will be used to weather the leather. Little lines and dots to bring in texture and give a little more form to the cape. And watered down into a layer, I go over the skin on the arms and the nurgling.
After that, I paint the rim black and the model is pretty much complete. Seriously, I had to paint this model. I knew that if I let it sit, that there was no way that I would have gotten to this really soon enough. Now, I'm a little disappointed that the other ones weren't included with this guy, but I also get to keep this one. He's mine, and he turned out gloriously disgusting. Conversions are something in this hobby that I find quite fascinating. Everyone who converts a model, even if it's the same model, will tackle the problem in a very different way. We all have access to completely different bits, and all of our hobby journeys are in different places, so the sheer number of combinations for each model is staggering. If you've been on the fence about converting models like I was not too long ago, let me tell you that there is no wrong way to do it. Jump in with both feet and smash plastic together. Just create something that makes you smile. This little guy makes me smile every time I look at it, and for me, that's what makes this hobby so great. Thank you for watching, and I truly hope you enjoy this ridiculous mini as much as I do. Thank you for joining me on another miniature rescue. If you like something about this video, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing as it really helps the channel. Once again, I'm Casey, and I will see you in the next video.